Hello, it me, the half and half boy, here to explain some stories in my life. So this video is way overdue, and I was threatened to make it. Not really, but that's what we're going with. So my girlfriend, who was great, saw the video I did a few months ago about the girl at the coffee place that I go to, and got jealous and said, now she needs a video. So now I'm doing it like this. So first off, we start off with how we met and how we started talking. So my homie Logan was on dating apps and kind of embarrassed to be using them, so I was like, eh, I'm single. Might as well support a homie, so I got Tinder and Bumble as well. I know, I know. Stupid. Dangerous. But, on the plus side, she hasn't wanted to kill me. Yet. At least I don't think she wants to. Anyway, I saw her on Bumble and was like, damn, she cute and has a cat. So obviously I swiped right on her. <laughs> she didn't have much to go off of on her profile, honestly. I just saw her eyes and she had a cat named Pancakes and I was like, yep, that's the woman for me. <laughs> I was out having dinner with my family and then I matched with her and just simply got a text that said, hey, so I said, hey back and the conversation just went from there. We were off and on a lot because the app didn't notify me when she texted and vice versa. So I asked for her Instagram or a number. She gave me her Instagram. We were still off and on a lot because she wasn't even sure she wanted to be talking to me. <laughs> After a few weeks of this and her avoiding me whenever I asked if she wanted to go do something anytime soon, I was like, okay, I'm gonna go to my grandparents to learn how to drive and get my license finally. I told her I was just going to house sit and dog sit because like, how do you explain to the person you want to date you can't drive and are also unemployed attending college and make stupid youtube videos anyway besides that we talked a lot while i was there much to my surprise she seemed to have suddenly changed her mind about me and i don't know why but i'm glad we talked every day yeah but it wasn't much eventually she gave me her number and we talked more there she asked what i was going to college for and somehow that led into us talking about my art and i showed her some of my drawings and honestly every time i show her a drawing that i do i feel like a child showing their parents the picture they just drew. When I got back home, I was hanging out with Logan while we walked his dog. R.I.P. to that little goober. You're part of the reason why I'm dating this beautiful girl in the first place, for real, for real. While we were walking her, I learned a little fun fact about her that I refused to say on YouTube. <laughs> and I told Kate about it. I quickly changed the subject, hoping she would forget about it. I was like, anyway, what would you want to do? Get coffee? Go out to eat? I have a few ideas. Uh -huh -huh. Just kind of hoping she'd like forget about it. Much to my surprise, she said yes. We were gonna go get coffee on her day off at my favorite coffee place. Yippee! Then Thursday rolled around. Heard nothing. My friend Aiden showed up and we hung out and then Logan came over. I had like $100 extra and was just like, F it. it's 7 p.m. The coffee place is closed. She doesn't want to talk to me. I'm going to play stick fight with the homies and go get snacks and just vibe. And then at 9.25 p.m., I get a text from her saying, I'm so sorry, I was asleep all day. I or the homies did not believe her. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I was a little mad, and this is gonna make me sound like a dick, but it really felt like I was being led on for a whole month. I was like, if she's really sorry, the least she could do is call me tonight, right? Because we had never called, and I had been asking for a long time. <laughs> so I said, it's okay, I would like to call tonight if that's okay. She agreed. An hour goes by, two hours go by, three hours go by. It's 1 a.m. I'm frustrated. The boys are tired. Logan wants to go home. So I'm like, F it. I'm going to bed. I give up on her. I get in my room, lock the door, and get ready for bed. I lay down on my bed, and then I get a text. Then another. I'm getting spammed. I think it's the group chat. Then I get called by her. I was shocked. I was relieved. I was, I was naked. What? That's, uh, that's a true fact. Whenever I sleep in my room by myself, I usually sleep without clothes because it's comfortable because of how hot it gets in here. We're here to watch a video about my girlfriend, not judge me on how I sleep, okay? Anyway, so we talked for a bit and it was a nice conversation. It was like we were good friends catching up on the phone. We were laughing and talking nonstop and then we ended the call. We decided to try the date again next Thursday. We talked and called a lot during the week leading up to it. And then the day finally came. We were both gonna take an Uber there and just meet to the coffee place because neither of us had a car we could drive at the moment. I got there first, so I picked a spot for us to sit at. I picked a booth because it looked comfy and cozy, and I was right, just for the record. I wait for a bit, I text her while she's on her way and work on my book some. Also, fun fact, this was the first time she had ever used an Uber, so I'm sure that made it more memorable for her. <laughs> but she got there and we said hi, and I was just in awe of her, honestly. <laughs> she was really pretty and just 
wow, you know, probably not, but moving on. We went to go get her drinks and I was looking at her because I was like, I'm 6'3", there's no way that 5'8 looks this tall next to me, right? Then I looked down to see that she was wearing boots with heels on them to make her taller, just to make sure I actually was six foot. We got our drinks, I got a muffin, then we went to our spot and talked for hours about random stuff, getting to know each other better. She really liked to listen to me ramble about the random nerdy things I'm into, like Iris, Minecraft, and my book series. I don't know why, but she did. We even accidentally kept finishing each other's sentences and saying the same things. She got there at about 11 a.m. and we didn't leave until like 1 p.m. She saw the shirt I was wearing and thought it was so cute and asked me where I got it. I was wearing my You Axolotl Questions shirt and I told her I got it from Hot Topic at the mall. So at like 1 p.m. she got hungry and was having trouble staying awake because she worked the night before and hadn't slept yet. So we decided just to go to the mall and to the food court because neither of us knew exactly what we wanted and it was just easier that way since we were already headed there we both decided to get chick-fil-a we looked around and did some shopping for her family for easter we went to hot topic and she found the shirt i was wearing she looked like she was debating on buying it so i slowly took it from her and she looked a little confused so i said i'll buy it for you and at that point she looked like she was about to cry <laughs> Anyway, I bought it for her and then we went all over the mall. <laughs> we spent so long on the first date that my dad got off of work and called me. <laughs> At about three-ish, we got done shopping and we both decided to go home because she had work later that night and I wanted her to get some sleep beforehand. We got outside and waited for our Ubers and she did that thing where you like, side hug someone. She was really nervous to hug me, but I hugged her anyway. She got her Uber first, so I, opened the door for her and helped her put her stuff in and then she was off not even 10 minutes later i got mine and went home i got a text from her saying she had a lot of fun and that she definitely wanted a second date so we planned out a date for the next thursday and according to her she deleted all the dating apps and blocked everyone she was talking to from them besides me after our first date later that night me and the homies went bowling and she texted me that she called in and was at the hospital because her ear was really hurting and she went to the immediate care center then she went out to eat and was really, really close to us. I asked if she wanted me to pick her up and she said yes, so I decided to pick her up and she unfortunately got to meet my friends, but she ended up liking them and they liked her. Everyone got home safe and she texted me, I really like you. I was in. <laughs> I saw her the next day too because I was going to the gym and I was like, I want to see you after if you don't mind, but Zach, my brother, voted she came with us. So she did and when I dropped her off, I kissed her on the cheek, but she thought I was trying to kiss her and missed. So she gave me a little peck. I was shocked, but happy, but confused. <laughs> then I saw her Easter afternoon as well because she wanted me to come over. I got to meet her family and hang out with her and her family. And then her family left and it was just me and her in her apartment just talking and hanging out. And the group chat that I'm in with my homies was blowing up. They were talking about us and saying some unholy things. The next date that we went on, she wanted to go out to eat somewhere. But the problem was, she wanted steak. The only good steak I could think of was my dad's. And I had talked about how good my dad's steak was to her, so she agreed. That Thursday, she came over and met my dad. He made steak for us all, all of us being my younger brother, me, Kate, and himself. She said it was the best steak she had ever had, and it ruined all of their steak for her. I was glad she liked it so much, and even more so, my dad seemed to like her, so that was good. We talked and saw each other for the next coming weeks, and then she had a really, really bad day, and I couldn't come see her. It was late at night, and I decided decided I was going to see her one way or another, even if I had to walk. I packed up my stuff, I started walking, then I got a call from Logan, Bruh. and he took me there. When I got there, she was really surprised and happy that I was there, and according to her, that's when she really fell in love with me, because I told her I was gonna be there for her, even if I had to walk. The next day was good, too. We played a lot of Minecraft and just hung out. I got to hang out with her cat Pancakes a lot. <laughs> she did end up getting me sick, though, but it is what it is. A few weeks later, Zach, her, and I went to this thing that takes place in our city once a year with planes and fireworks over the river. It's really cool. If you're ever in the area during April, definitely check it out. But she had a lot of fun, and I figured she would because she's not from here and likes airplanes. <laughs> a few weeks later, we were a bit distant because of her work and my college were getting busy and spent about two or three weeks apart and not really talking. I missed her, she missed me, and it was just blech. But we eventually did see each other again and kept spending time together. She made me watch Twilight with her. 
the entire series. As much of a meme as it is to hate watching it, I like watching it with her. And that's the only way I will watch it. Around the end of May, we actually went to King's Island together with her mom, sister, and two of her friends. She got a giant dinosaur and was really happy. She went on a trip to see her sister's boyfriend with her sister, and before she left, she apparently had strep throat and only found out after seeing me, so she got me sick again. But it is what it is again. <laughs> when she got back, I decided to do a bunch of things for her since she had done a lot for me recently. I went to Barnes & Noble and got her another Dino Plus she wanted, and I took her to the cat cafe. Finally, it was a lot of fun. We played with the kittens. She even got to pick one up and it stayed in a ball in her hands. There were cats piled on top of one another and they had silly names like Kool-Aid Jammers, Goose, and Oops. <laughs> we got coffee while we were there along with some stickers and two keychains, and then we got fun tea. It was a nice day. I wanted to get her her favorite flowers, but couldn't find them anywhere near me, so I got her a pot of yellow roses instead, because yellow is her favorite color. She sadly ended up moving to Utah not too long after. I had to stay in her apartment for almost an hour after she left while I waited for my dad to come get me. It hurt a lot, and I honestly thought it was over when she moved. Every day sucked. I didn't want to get out of bed, and I just missed her a lot. We got Life360 so we could keep track of each other and still feel somewhat connected, but we texted every day. We called pretty much every night, except for like two nights while she was gone. We had a few arguments here and there, but we made it. She came back on September 27th and surprised me by being with me for my birthday. She got my dad's number from my younger brother and coordinated this whole elaborate plan to surprise me and even had my dad pick her up from the airport. <laughs> That's how I knew my dad liked her because not only did he pick her up from the airport, but it also turned off the music when she got in the car so he could yap to her. <laughs> my dad really only does that if he likes you. She went up to my room and pretended to be Gavin unlocking the door, then came in my room. <laughs> she threw her suitcase to the side and just jumped on top of me. And honestly, holding her again for the first time in a long time was one of the best feelings in the world. Everything felt so right. It felt like a weight had been lifted off of my chest and I could finally breathe again. We spent maybe five minutes without saying anything, and it was all I could ever ask for after months of struggling and missing her. While she was here, we had a lot of fun. We ran around all of Kentucky, basically, and even went on a few more dates, including going to the Cincinnati Zoo with her family and recreating our first date, sort of. We walked across the walking bridge that connects my city to Indiana, and then she was with me when I met Wooden and his parents in person for the first time. I wouldn't have wanted anyone else but her with me for that. I was nervous, honestly, but I kept telling her, I'm so excited to meet him finally, and I'm so glad that you're the person I share this moment with. Everything felt as it should. She got along really well with Wood and his parents. They even gave her some Canadian currency and she gave them some things to do while they were here. And then my least favorite part happened not even 10 hours later. On her birthday, I had to take her to the airport so she could go home. I didn't sleep at all, but she did for a little bit. Then we woke up at 4 a.m. to go get breakfast with her friend, and then we drove to the airport. I held her hand and she held mine, and we kept saying we didn't want to do this. But I reassured her that we did it before and we can do it again, no matter how much it sucks. When we got there, she had my blue ring on her finger or on her thumb again. The first time she had left, she accidentally took my blue ring and I got another one so I could have a ring to match her. We got to security and she hugged me and I hugged her and I didn't want to let go at all. I wanted to find some way to make her stay, but I knew she had a life and everything she owns in Utah. We both cried and gave each other one more kiss. And then I watched her go through security. I wanted so badly to run after her. 
but I didn't. I knew I had to let her go back home, and when I couldn't see her anymore, I left. And that's when I realized that she had taken my ring with her. <laughs> Again. I went back to the elevator and put my head on the wall while waiting for the elevator, just thinking to myself about how much I miss her already, even though we were in the same building. When I got to the bottom floor, I just leaned over the railing of the turned off escalators and put my face into my hands. I was filled with so much pain, frustration, anger, regret. I wanted to run after her. I wanted to be with her. I wanted to go back with her or have her stay. I didn't care so long as I was with her. I had so many things welling up inside me that I didn't know what to do. I slammed my fist onto the railing and just kind of put my face into my hands. I took a deep breath in and out, feeling that same familiar feeling again. It was like that weight got put back on me. I left the airport and got in my car, and as soon as I closed the door, I looked over at the dinosaur I got her for her birthday and just started crying. It was quiet in the car and I didn't like it. The seat next to me was empty and I didn't like it. I missed her so much already. But the good news is she made it home safe and had a good birthday at her work. And I got to hang out with Wooden and still text and call her every night and every day since she left. She had a lot of fun and I hope that I can continue to make her happy in the future. And I hope that this lasts for a while because I really, really like her. and appreciate everything she's done for me, even if it's something tiny. I know you're watching this, babes, so hi, <laughs> and thank you again. Things are very difficult right now, and we both know why. They're only gonna get more difficult, but that doesn't mean that we can't make it. And sooner or later, I will see you again, and I will be with you. I say it every time, but I genuinely mean it when I say, I really didn't expect anything to come out of that first date we went on. And afterwards, I don't know, it was it's like I didn't want anybody else but you. I felt like everything was right with you. I miss you a lot, and you know that. And I love you a lot, and you know that. But yeah, thank you all, everybody else, for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.